Okay, I'm recording. So I'm going to make a new project then. <coughs> and it is going to be, if I go over here to the side, under web, we want .NET Core, right? By the way, if you <coughs> really want to do a web forms, it's still in Visual Studio, but you have to go expand it here, go to previous versions, and then you can get a web form site right here, right? So it is still in there, just that's old school now. <laughs> We've got better things to do with our time. So we're going to go with .NET Core. It'll be ASP.NET Core Web Application at this point. Now, students who've had me before know this already. I really discourage you from just using okay, these paths that it defaults to. What I strongly suggest is make your own folder in the root of the C drive. That way you don't at the end of the test think, crap. Where's my test? I got a hand in my files. I've only got 30 seconds left to do it, right? Because you know you're always in the same spot, right? Right in the root of the C drive, make a folder. So I'm going to browse right now and do that. So I'll go to this PC, <coughs> go to the C drive. I'll make a new folder. I might call it my work. And there we go. So I'm going to select that folder. Right? Now, when I create the project, it will make its own project folder inside there. That's the best arrangement. If you just do the project right in the root of C, then the operating system won't let you right-click and zip it. Okay? Mind you, it will offer to zip it and put it on the desktop, but then you know, that's one extra step you have to worry about. So just make your project folder inside your own folder, and you're golden. You're good to go. Now, for web application, I might as well get started on our classroom example, medical office. Core, I'll call it. <coughs> Medical Office Core. And I'll let it create the directory for the solution. Good. Okay. Now we have more choices. Oh, don't you love, you choose one thing in the menu and then it makes you choose another, right? Okay, so we're going to do the <coughs> web application using Model View Controller, right? And I told you before to uncheck this, don't bother. <laughs> Because what we have to do, I want to change authentication because I'm planning ahead here. And what we're going to look at is individual user accounts. That where everybody who logs in has their own username and password, right? We're going to go with them, uh, store them in the application itself. We'll store them in the database, right? The SQL Server database. And that's going to be our approach. You could go with something like Active Directory over here, work school accounts or with just Windows authentication, if your application was only ever going to be a intranet, not internet, intranet, meaning it uses HTTP protocols, but only in a local area network, right? Then you're fine to use just Windows authentication. So when they log in to the PC, you can just grab that credential and use it. But we're going to go with the individual user accounts. That's what works best for us. Notice that the configure option is grayed out, OK? It, insists on configuring for HTTPS, but don't worry, we're going to fool it <laughs> afterwards. So I'll just click OK. Well, I should have pointed out at the top, you saw it said SDK 2.1, right? Don't change it. Leave, leave it on that, and you're good. OK, so here we are. I'll just uh, close that for now. All right, so here we have our MVC application. Now, maybe I'll deal with that issue first, because if I try to run this right now, I will get a very nice, well, not all that nice, not all that friendly message, but an informative message in a sense. <coughs> it's configured for SSL. That's that HTTPS, right? And I can say, oh, yes, I would like to trust the certificate. Wah, 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 wah. No way. Okay. Uh, access is denied. So we don't have the rights to trust the certificate. So that's not going to work, and we'll just get this secure connection failed. There is a workaround, and I put it up in Blackboard, right? So basically, let me just refer back to Blackboard so you know where it is. Uh, under content categories, tips and tricks. So things that you'll, they don't really belong to one topic, but little tips and tricks that are useful all over the place, I'll often throw in here. Ah, steps to run without HTTPS, right? Basically, the fourth one I found out isn't actually required, but the first three are. So basically, in the Solution Explorer, we'll find properties. Okay, We'll click on it. I think you just double-click on it. I don't think we right-click. Sorry, that's a typo I did earlier this morning. 
And in the debug area, there's a checkbox for enable SSL on the web server. So that's all I have to do. So let me come back to Visual Studio. Here's properties in the Solution Explorer. I can just double click. And you see there's tabs sort of along the side here for all the different areas of the uh, configuration that we can mess with. So down to debug, and there's web server settings, right? So I just uncheck enable SSL. And now I will actually be able to run it even though I don't have a certificate. It won't insist on having HTTPS. That last uh, point I had up in Blackboard, here in startup.cs, there is this option down here <coughs> to add HTTPS redirection. I thought you had to comment that out because that was in some of the documentation I found first when I researched this. But it seems that you don't have to. It works okay with that there. So I don't know. Maybe uh, down the road it would be a good thing if I do comment it out. It's not going to hurt anything. That's what another user had posted that they did to help solve the problem. But in any case, that's good enough for now. So I'll just save that. And let's just show you this running again. This time, it should work. <coughs> Not even sure, am I in Firefox here? I think so. Okay, so you see it comes up with this accept the cookie policy business. We'll talk more about that later. That's kind of built into our template. Once I do, then I have a nav bar up top, right? Uh, if you look carefully at the, uh, <coughs> the web address up here, you'll see as I click these different links, okay, that's home about, home contact, this is, believe it or not, home index. It just disappears because it knows it so well, right? So this kind of is your first glimpse at that routing I was talking about. The default routing is set up, and I'll show you where it's defined in code, but most MVC works this way. That There's the controller. The name of our controller here is the home controller, and then it has different actions. So it has an about action, a contact action, and an index action. I think they threw in one new one as well. Right? So that's how we actually bring up any request to the controller is we ask for a given controller and a given action and then we'll get a response back. Okay? So that's tied into this nav bar up here. By the way, this is using Bootstrap. So the whole thing is entirely responsive. Right? So if I resize my app, let me go back to the home. By the way, you can also click on this. It's just another link to get to the home index. Right? You'll see that how everything changes as I get to a smaller screen, right? Layout will change from horizontal to a more vertical and so on. Things will automatically resize. Eventually the menu, see that? How the menu changes from having the choices along the top to the hamburger menu, right? And it's all built into the template using Bootstrap. We'll be going through and learning how to modify it where we need to, but for the most part, we just get to use it. We don't have to do too much to it, right? Okay. <coughs> so it's up and running now. We got over our HTTPS issue. All right. Um, back in Blackboard, I go to the weekly content. <coughs> what I often will do as we build demonstrations in class is I will put up these copy-paste files, right? For those that know me, I'm dyslexic. Watching me type is a painful ordeal. Yeah, yeah, I, I make so many typos and everything else, it's just awful to sit there and watch. So what I do is I'll have things ready to copy paste in, kind of like those cooking shows, right? Where, you know, you throw all these ingredients together, you have them already pre-measured so you can just toss them in, right? Well, that's what I'm doing here, okay? Later on, when you take it out of the oven, uh, you pretend it's been cooked for a half hour, but you have one ready to go, same kind of thing. That's how I do my demos, right? All right, <clears throat> but so what these are is they're little text files that I can copy and paste from to build my demo. Uh, it would be cruel of me to keep them to myself. I might look smart, but that isn't very smart for an, from an instructional point of view, so I always make them available to you too. That way if you really want, insist on following along, you have a better chance of keeping up, right? Uh, but you know, in any case, you have a copy of all the code that I'm integrating in. But of course, I'll explain as I go and I paste things in what the code does and why it's there, right? Now I can copy right out of the browser or I can download the text file and get it that way. 
All right. But we're going to use some of this. Uh, you know, let's see. Yeah, I might just use it. Oh, wait. No. Yeah, no, I'm going to download the file. Because I, I hate selecting text with the mouse. I always prefer using, like, shift and the arrow keys to go up and down because I always select too much or not enough, and then I go past the scroll point, and I get 200 extra lines, and I'm scrolling up and down. So I'm going to download these files. Maybe I'll just store them right in my same folder here, my uh, work folder. That way I have them available. I don't think I'll get past step one today, so I won't worry about step two. All right, but I'll open that up in Notepad. Then that way it's easy for me to select. All right, so going back to Visual Studio, what we're going to do now is I'm going to we'll kind of tour the Solution Explorer a little bit, and then we'll have a break, okay, before we actually start putting any code in. Let me just come over here then. In Solution Explorer, you'll see a few folders that were added as part of this template that should look familiar for an MVC course, right? Model, views, and controllers. Okay, that relates to our MVC design pattern. A few extra things, areas. In a large, complex application, you can say, well, you know, we have a whole bunch of controllers and views all related to the inventory control system. We might create a separate area just for that, right? Or we might have the human resources part in, in a different area, but all in the same application. So areas are not necessary for what we're going to do, but you know they're there for a very, very large complex application just to help keep it more segregated and separated and easier to manage and maintain. Right? Data, if I hadn't checked that option for the individual user accounts for our security and login system, I wouldn't have created this folder. This folder is here because we said we're gonna store that information in a database, right? So I made this data folder, and there is the DB context. Ah, yes, the DB context. We're going to talk a lot about what a DB context is. Think of it as the telephone for calling up the database. Hey, database, right? I want to get all the list of customers in the system, right? That would be a select query, but you've got to talk through the telephone to the database, and that's your context object. It's your connection, you might say, to the database itself. So this one is predefined and set up for our security system. So we can see what it looks like. It inherits from a particular special data con DB context called identity. Identity is the name of the security system that's supported by Microsoft in the latest versions. And then we have just some options here related to getting the context object up and going, right? Just a constructor, really, where we can add additional code. So we're going to make our own context in a few minutes, but I just thought I'd point out that that's here, as well as a migrations folder, right? Whereas it's all ready to actually, through migrations, create a database schema to store our, our actual tables for usernames and logins and passwords and so on. All right, so that's in our data folder. Uh, in the models folder, there's just an error view model. That's nothing. Uh, controllers, there's our home controller. And the views, we see there's a folder here called home that has views to go along with the home controller. So it follows a simple naming convention, right? It's convention instead of configuration, the approach here in MVC. Convention, what I mean by that, let me open up this controller. So you see here in the code, it inherits from a controller, we're calling it home controller. It has three action results index, about, and contact. You notice in each and every one at the end, all it says is return what? Return view. Which view? How does it know? Oh my goodness, what's going on here? Well, there's a convention. If this is the home controller, and I ask for the about action, when I say return view, it's going to come over here to the views, find home, and find about. So rather than having that in some configuration file, cluttering up our project with a million little configuration settings, it just follows a simple convention, right? So once you learn it, it's easy, okay? So any controller, no, I've, I don't want to move it, thanks. <laughs> any controller will have actions, and the corresponding views will be in a folder of the same name as a controller, right? So it makes it nice and easy, and away we go. 
All right, well, I think we'll call a break. So I'll just stop recording here.